All right, so last couple of days we've had the Australian National Championships. Um, unfortunately, there's no coverage of anything because, I don't know, there just isn't. Otherwise, I'd do some race analysis, but I can't seem to find any. As soon as there's race analysis, I'll be back on it because I know everyone loves that. Um, so anyway, I was just looking at the individual time trial results are quite striking because we have the world champion here who came second and Luke Derbridge managed to win, uh, which is obviously a shock because you think Rowan Dennis will be in good form. <clears throat> But potentially, there's a lot of reasons why he might not be in good form. Um, but anyway, we'll have a look at the time gaps and then look at his comments. Uh, some people said that maybe he wasn't trying, but he said he was. Um, so you can see Luke Derbidge won with a time of 51.01 um, on the course, which I believe is about 48 kilometers or something, about that, 45 kilometers. Um, Brian Dennis, 21 seconds back. Cameron Meyer, 43 seconds back. So these guys are all pretty close. And then Nathan Haas is like two minutes 20 down. So Australia definitely has some solid time trialists. All these three guys and Hepburn are all very, very solid. Um, a lot of them were in the track, so have that sort of uh, ability to time trial well. So anyway, we'll go into, over to this article about Ryan Dennis. You can see his nice position here. I'm going to go into his position in a little bit because um, we'll see his comments. Um, so anyway, he said, for me, it was a good ride. I was just beaten by a better guy. Whoever wins is best. Um, he said, you know, he's saying it's good because he can't wear the thing. He said, look, the legs are there. The power's good. As good as any year, other year, if not a little bit better. So he's saying that his form is there. Potentially he's lying. Potentially he's just saying, you know, this to like cover up something. Um, but what he'll, you'll see later is that, so it's just about finding out why it didn't go as quick as now and fixing it for the next race. It's all about trying to figure out how to go a little bit quicker with the equipment that I've got, which for me is, is a bit of resentment um, because his, his t uh, BMC time machine uh, is basically built around him. I remember, um, I think it was in France's Cade video where they were talking about different time trial bikes and they were saying that Rowan Dennis is, um, for Rowan Dennis, sorry, the BMC time machine is sort of like built around his um, position and that it's super fast in his position, but maybe other positions it's not. So potentially the Merida is not as fast in his position. I mean, look, it's not going to be much, but it could be, you know, five, 10 watts, which is, you know, significant at these um, these sort of speeds. Uh, potentially the wheels aren't as quick. I'm not sure how far, fast fast forward wheels are compared to the pro um, disc wheel and Shimano. I think he normally runs a C80 on the front. Um, like he doesn't like the tri spokes. Um, uh, but anyway, and potentially the Rudy helmet as well. I mean, those are things you can think of. Bars, extensions, um, they should be, I mean, as long as you can get the position right, then it, it should be okay. Um, but anyway, it's quite interesting because we have the power numbers. So, Durbo uploads onto Strava under an alias of Buzz Lightyear, uh, which didn't take too long to figure out because he was the only guy who absolutely smashed everyone else. Um, so you can see here's the elite national individual time trial full course. It's really weird Australia uses the same course every year. I think it's incredibly boring. And in my opinion, you just change it every single year like that you do in the UK and most other countries. Um, number one, it would create a more exciting race and also allow different people to win it. Um, I guess different people do win it, but I just feel like it's so dead. Like, why would you have it in the same place every year? But anyway, that's a rant aside. Uh, 47.8 kilometers an hour, 415 watts for 50 minutes. Um, it's very solid. It's nothing absolutely mind-boggling, to be honest. Um, uh, this course, I don't think, suits potentially the best um, average power. Um, you'll see this first bit. He keeps it pretty smooth, but again, you can see there's rolling hills here, um, so it's not ideal. Um, and then there's a big gap here where he reaches sort of 70 something k's an hour. Um, but technically, I don't think it's too much. That it's basically an out and back course. Um, and then you can see again uh, this this second bit. He also keeps it pretty smooth um, until the turnaround, 430 watts. Um, so I guess his threshold is probably around you know 430 or something uh, in the TT position again. So that that is pretty impressive. Again, 422 watts. So he paced it pretty well. Last bit, you can see that the power is a lot more jumpy, uh, 423, but look at this, there's suddenly dips and stuff, I, which is obviously, it's natural, um, it's what happens when you get tired, it's harder to hold the exact power, and also it's an undulating course. Um, so if you can imagine that, um, it says 376 watts, I'm not really sure why it says that, I guess he didn't stop uh, recording straight away, um, but for the effort, 415 watts. So you think for Rowan Dennis, uh, he's probably doing <clears throat> pretty similar, um, pretty similar watts, I'd say maybe a little less, um, probably just because he weighs, I think he does weigh less than Durbo, and he's probably slightly more aero. Um, so potentially Rowan Dennis is only doing 400 watts for 50 minutes, um, but I don't think Rowan Dennis is in peak shape, because I know for the hour record he did he did over 400 watts. Someone commented on my on my video ages ago about what watts he did. Um, but yeah, so you could reckon that for 50, 45, um, and then you can see Rowan Dennis 21 seconds behind, yeah, it'll probably be around 400 watts, um, which is pretty solid for Rowan Dennis. Um, but I guess the main thing is, is it has his position changed um, and we'll have a look at the pictures before and after and see potentially why he's not going as fast. So you can see this is a classic Michigan Scott setup. Uh, they ha they generally do the C60 on the front, not the C80. That, actually, that could be a C C80. I think it's, yeah, it might actually be a C80. 
uh, lightweight autobahn rear discs, 58s on the front, uh, normally around 28 on this course. Um, I don't think they generally tend to downshift. Um, aero shoe covers and everything, which is pretty standard. This helmet, they don't seem to wear the goggles. Um, they seem to wear, or sorry, the visors, they tend to wear the helmets. Um, and the TT position is pretty modern era, um, none of the stupid Katana stuff. Um, so anyway, you can see we're on Dennis here. There's a good shot of him. Uh, here, he's not as lean, like if you look at Cameron Meyer, like Cameron Meyer is definitely leaner Rowan Dennis. I think Rowan Dennis' reality is not in great shape. Uh, he probably just said stuff to, you know, not, not appear like a sore loser, but in my opinion, he's obviously peaking for like Tour de France. Um, I'm not sure if he's doing the Giro, but I know he's definitely supporting Nibli in the Tour de France. Uh, nice Worlds thing. Um, and anyway, we can all see his position um, between the two. So pretty similar position here. Um, I'd say if anything, he's slightly lower down on the BMC time machine here. Um, if you look at his back angle just there, and you look at his back angle here, obviously the photos are slightly different, but in my opinion, it looks like he's raised up a little bit, which is, I, I don't know, maybe maybe that's t tend to be faster than Merida. I'm not sure how much time he's had in Merida. Has he been to the wind tunnel? It's hard to say. Um, again, he has the bottle. Some people run them with the bottle. Some people don't run with the bottle. Um, they have the arrow bottle. They have this weird arrow bottle that I, apparently is fast, but I'm not really sure. Um, and then, yeah, we can see this is Dumoulin, but that's sort of irrelevant. I'm not sure why they're showing him when I search for Dennis. But he tends to have the, the fingers forward like that, which apparently is faster. So you can see here is the fingers to the side. Um, that's obviously Dumoulin, but he generally it seems to be that his faster was when he had fingers forward. Um, and here, again, he has his fingers forward. Uh, pretty tucked in. Um, he could definitely, like, his shoulders are very, very tight together. Um, and his shoe covers are classic C shoe covers. Are they fast? I'm not really sure. I, I have no testing. I have no data, and I haven't seen any data. Um, but you can see, yeah, this is Durbridge. Um, I think it's interesting having the sunglasses. I'm not sure if it's slow or not. Um, I guess they must have tested it and said it's not. Um, but yeah, Durbridge is actually on quite an old Scott Plasma. Um, potentially, his, his actual Scott Plasma is in um, Europe, and he hadn't, didn't bring it over. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely an old paint job. Um, still got, and that's an old. you can see that's an old Durace wheel as well. Um, so that's pretty incredible. He did win it on some. I mean, it's still, it's still top quality equipment. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I bet he's probably running the old Giro race as well. Uh, can't actually see on that one to be honest if that's old or new. Um, and yeah, he's wearing these weird shoe cover things that seem pretty popular. Do you see Dumoulin wearing them quite a lot as well? Um, so yeah, that is the positions. That is what everyone's on. Uh, four hundred watts or so is basically what four hundred and fifteen watts. It's pretty impressive for Durbo. Um, I wonder what his weight is actually. We'll have a little Google. Um, but yeah, it's it's early season, so it's hard to read into anything uh, that much. Uh, but 78 kilos, yeah, it seems about right. Five watts a kilo, more or less, um, for an hour. <clears throat> Which, to be honest, I mean, it doesn't actually sound that mega, but obviously in a TT position and 415 watts it, in an undulating course is very, very solid. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video about uh, time trialing and like the difference in the positions um, Dennis obviously has a lot of work to do, and I think in reality it's probably his form. He might just be blagging and saying, oh, it's, he's got good power, I don't know. Um, but definitely he um, has room to improve, uh, and I think that he will probably have a very successful season again because he has the power, he knows what he's doing, he seems to be very good at pacing, and I'd love to see Rowan Dennis post back on Strava like he used to. Anyway, cheers for watching, hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.